What can I tell you about Marty Russell? She is a consummate leader and fundraiser. She is a natural mentor known far and wide for a willingness to share her skills and expertise. And she is an enthusiastic advocate for the Junior League and the value of volunteerism, not just within the Junior League of Toronto, but also through the many community organizations and programs she supports. There is another thing you should know about Marty. She's not afraid to tackle controversial issues. Returning to active status after being a sustainer for many years, Marty was one of the drivers behind JLT's lifelong membership committee. Her compassionate and collaborative leadership style helped members embrace the changes that are critical to the League's long-term survival. In 1974, Marty was asked to be GL JLT's representative on the board of Planned Parenthood. It had just become legal to provide birth control information in Canada, and there were many violently opposed to this change. Amid this turbulence, she helped establish a health clinic for youth and made birth control information available to them. In 1988, she became the founding director of Fife House, which provides supportive housing for people living with HIV AIDS. Her leadership helped evolve Fife House from one residence in a secret location that served five people to an organization that now serves 500 people per year and provides 80% of the supportive housing for HIV AIDS in Toronto. In 1992, using her nursing skills and her junior league training, she became a founding trustee for Wellspring. This Toronto agency provides, at no charge, a network of community-based cancer centers providing support and education to people who are coping with non-medical side of cancer. Marty was also at the forefront of the hospice movement in Toronto and is the founding director of the Toronto Common Dairy Hospice, where she is working hard to raise $5 million to build a new hospice. And she was hustling people earlier, I want to just tell you for lunch about today. She was just sharing that. And to top it all off, Marty was an environmentalist pioneer too. As a member of the Junior League of Erie, Pennsylvania in the early 70s, she challenged executives at the Hammer Mill Paper Company about their waste disposal system. Later, after moving to Toronto, she was a driver of the Wipeout Waste Program, addressing pollution and recycling issues there. Looking back on an extraordinary league career, Marty says, the value of my junior league experience can be measured in many ways. However, two in particular have allowed me to grow personally. The friendships of 30 years, and the training which gave me the initial skill set and confidence to sit on community boards. Please join me in congratulating Marty Russell, the 2016 winner of the Mary Harriman Community Leadership Award. <laughs> I was raised in Erie, Pennsylvania. Our life was much like Ozzie and Harriet. Marty was a nickname that was given to me and used by my family, primarily by my father. I had a sister, Maureen, pretty and pink. Then I came along, and let's just say I didn't get that gene. From my great-grandmother through to my grandmother, my mother, my mother-in-law and my aunts. They were all junior leaguers at one point in their lives. They knew the essence of the community and what was important to them. Moving to Canada in 1971 after her provisional year in the Junior League of Erie, Pennsylvania, Marty joined the Junior League of Toronto. Volunteerism, civic leadership, tenacity and dare were already shaping her league career. Like Mary Harriman, Marty Russell has been a trailblazer since joining the Junior League at the age of 21. I met Marty as a brand new Junior Leaguer when she was uh, head of training. She was a dynamic, interesting leader at that time. She has what I call initiative. There are very few people who see something to be done and don't say, well, somebody ought to do something. Or maybe they say, well, the government ought to do something. And then there are a few people that say, I could do something. Even if it doesn't solve the whole problem, it'll contribute and you will be a leader for other people. In the early 70s, when it just became legal to provide birth control information, Marty Russell sat on the board of Planned Parenthood Canada as a representative of the Junior League of Toronto and was instrumental in forming one of the first health clinics that dispense this information to young girls. Marty identified the need for lifelong membership. We were concerned that we were losing too many members. And we also needed to make sure that members continued to be active in some capacity. She actually took the bull by the horns and 
led a committee to address lifelong membership, and since then a number of other members have done the same. Show House brings together the finest designers, suppliers, and sponsors to raise support for the Junior League of Toronto programs. Show House was an amazing experience. We were challenged in many ways having to deal with three levels of government. The biggest problem was the fire department, of whom came one hour before we would open and said that we couldn't. But after a little discussion and Junior League uh, wherewithal, shall we say, he decided it was a good idea. Marty's work with the Junior League of Toronto led her to housing of a very different nature. In 1988, she became a founding director of Fife House, providing supportive housing for people living with HIV AIDS. I think Marty is a phenomenal bridge builder. In the early days, she was instrumental in getting funding in place so that we could train hospice volunteers across the province and that training is still in use today. She's got this unique ability to be able to bring together people of various backgrounds, and she can do that in a wholly disarming and thoroughly sincere way, and she's got a wicked giggle too. Marty not only served at her own local community, but she also served on the Association of Junior League's International Board. With strong leadership skills grounded in the Junior League, Marty founded a new business that fixed her focus on health care, advocacy, benefits and opportunities for families and women. In 1990, Marty and I founded IntegraCare. After 10 years of receiving health care services, we realized that there were big shortcomings. Most services were being provided by government. The problem there is that all the service companies had one client, the government. On top of that, it was a time that women were having difficulty getting back into the workforce. The agency gave us the opportunity to give people jobs. The development of our education center gave us the opportunity to train people. Now they had a certificate. They could go out and be paid for what they were doing. In conjunction with becoming Dame Commander in the Order of St. Lazarus, in 2004, Marty became a founding director of the Toronto Commandery Hospice to provide end-of-life care. The volunteer charitable organization is now running an $8 million capital campaign to build the 10-bed residential hospice. Not only has she been on the ground floor in terms of scoping out uh, possible uh, locations, but she's been incredibly informative and connected. Marty was one of the first women invited to be a celebrity clown in Toronto's annual Santa Claus Parade. Some people say it's not much of a stretch. She jumped at the opportunity and Sunshine was born. Going into hospitals and having the opportunity to make someone smile, to go into seniors' homes, you then can touch someone. People don't touch seniors. We help out at the Geneva Center for Autism. When Sunshine arrives, they're so excited. It actually does a lot for the energy of the children. My name as a clown is Sunshine, which was given to me by... <sighs> Marty has often found herself a woman in a man's world. Having served on nearly 20 boards, Marty's experience and leadership have proven invaluable time and again. In 2008, she was invited to become a member of the International Women's Forum. We know that Marty's network will come in really handy to promote the International Women's Forum to young women, ensuring that they feel comfortable in the organization and will grow to become tomorrow's leaders. The Junior League was a starting point for me in many, many ways. The women of the International Women's Forum, as well as the Women's President's Organization. These are women that also see needs and direction in their community and make things happen. Thank you, Marty, for your outstanding work in strengthening hospice palliative care in Ontario and your enormous contribution in so many other areas. If you know Marty, you know that she is determined and persistent. Once she sets a goal, she doesn't give up until she reaches it. So many have benefited from your tenacity and commitment, Marty. Thank you. You have truly made a difference across our province and our country. She's rigorous, she's thorough, she's inventive. She's worked with the underprivileged, the unwed mother, people with AIDS. You know, it's just wonderful that the world is finally recognizing her. Congratulations, Marty. I'd like to congratulate Marty Russell on receiving the prestigious Mary Harriman Award and bringing it home to Toronto. From her work with the Junior League, Fife House, Planned Parenthood, and hospice care activism, she is so deserving of our respect and appreciation. An award recipient who truly exemplifies all that Mary Harriman was about. On behalf of the Junior League of Toronto, we are so proud of you. As Lieutenant Governor, I get to see the impact of volunteerism all over this province. I've been very proud to witness her caring for those around her. She's an unsung hero, and I'm delighted that she's so deserving of this reward.
I thank the Association of Junior Leagues for this wonderful award. I'm very, very proud and I accept it on behalf of my fellow leaguers and I commend them for the work that they continue to do in their communities. Thank you. And now it is my pleasure to present the 2016 Mary Harriman Community Leadership Award to Marty Russell. Look at all this good stuff, Marty. You don't have to pull out your blankets and pillows. I promise I'll make this brief. Uh, thank you, Ellen. And uh, <laughs> as my friends who know me well, who are sitting over here, I cry when I'm happy. I cry when I'm sad. So <laughs> and I'm very, very happy. I'm truly honored to have been chosen to receive the 2016 Mary Harriman Community Leadership Award. In the membership of over 150,000 deserving women, all contributing to meet the needs of their community, it is truly humbling, and Sunshine and I accept. <laughs> it is particularly special for me to be receiving this award in 2016 as this is the Junior League of Toronto's 90th anniversary year and the 75th anniversary year of my home league, the Junior League of, of Erie, Pennsylvania. Congratulations to them. <laughs> A funny thing happened on my way to receiving the uh, Mary Harriman Community Service Award. Not just leaving my husband, Phil, on the Enchante, cruising with six other wonderful, understanding friends who uh, are still drinking and eating, I'm sure, uh, amazing food with the most amazing chef. But when I was kindly uh, told that I may be receiving this award, that I would then be coming to Atlanta, I think my proposer and the committee had more faith in it than I did because I went about my plans as usual. And surprise, after arriving last night at whatever time, five, and leaving tonight at five, I really want to thank a very understanding husband for uh, putting up with all that I do with that. <laughs> to say we live in the time of challenge and sh change would be an understatement. But a constant for me is my affiliation with the Junior League. The League for me is my oasis of like-minded family and friends of whom we share values and visions for tomorrow. Much like a family, in particular the League has given me a place to challenge myself, hone my skills, agree to disagree as we go forward together to accomplish what we do in our community. Again, I'd like to thank the Junior League of Toronto's nominating team for their work in my nomination letter. I think I owe them big time. Um, and again, for the work as if they had nothing else to do in their 90th anniversary year. Along with, again, trying to really look at some of the reasons and the challenges of even getting here, and not that it makes a big difference, but I think it's something that we all do in our very, very busy lives. Two weeks ago, I was at a women's president's organization meeting, their annual conference, and as I say, in France last week um, and tonight, 
and going forward uh, after this wonderful event with the International Women's Forum. They are meeting in Tel Aviv, where some of my friends will also be in attendance, which is very important. And I will always say that the reason for having these opportunities has been the fact that I have had so much wonderful, wonderful opportunities within the Junior League. And I suggest to all of you that you take advantage of that. Learn your skills here. It's a safe environment, even when we fail. We get back up and we carry on together. And it's something that I think that you would be very, very wise to consider going forward. And not that I want to say all the boards I'm on. I mean, who needs sleep? You just sit on boards, right? Um, I was asked to sit on a board, which sounds quite wonderful, and it really is, the International Wine and Food Society of the Americas. Um, <laughs> and I'm chairing membership. Anybody who's interested, by all means, come and talk to me. And what was important with this board, amongst uh, the wonderful people and the work that they do, is that it's an all-male board. There's one other woman. There's one other woman. And it was very important to me to make sure that there was female representation on this board. And I hope to make sure that that increases going forward. They are currently meeting in the Cayman Islands as we speak. So, um, Andrew, I'm sorry. I'm going to be a little late for that meeting. But I think it's for a very good reason. I think they'll understand. In looking at the video, um, of which I want to thank in particular Nadine Spencer, who is a past president of the Junior League of Toronto, who is here, and put that together. And she made things so easy to do. So if you ever need a video, I highly recommend her. But it was really interesting watching it for the first time with my husband. And we laughed, um, particularly because we were having a glass of wine at the time. But, but I had said, uh, that if I should leave this world earlier than we'd planned, that he was all set. All he had to do was put that video on a loop, serve some wine, and the funeral is done. It's, so he's, um, we're good, we're good. Okay. Mind you, at the end of this month, maybe sooner than I thought, but at any rate. Seriously, though, there were so many kind words said in that video of just humbles me beyond belief from very, very accomplished people. Um, to be able to have John Tory, our mayor, uh, speak on my behalf, just for interest's sake, his mother is a junior leaguer. Senator Nancy Ruth, again, another good friend, and right there when we asked her to participate, her mother was a junior leaguer. Uh, the honorary president of the Junior League of Toronto, Pat Mackay, she was one of the first women to speak. She's 90 plus years old and is as active as any of us could ever want to be. So again, mentors and role models going forward. Um, the Lieutenant Governor, Elizabeth Dodswell, for people that aren't Canadian and don't know, she's the Queen's representative in, in Ontario. And for her to give of her time was just extraordinary. Mind you, I must say, when the limos came up, my neighbors were quite concerned of what was going on with this revolving limo within our driveway. But uh, I know her as Liz. She's great. She would want you to call her that, too. But when the, gov the Governor General um, has chosen for her area of concern is community involvement all throughout Ontario, and she's taken that as her mission going forward. Again, amazing women and amazing people to, um, to have in your life. Um, other people, again, Diana Burke from the International Women's Forum, uh, a, a terrific, terrific friend. And who, where would I be without my fellow league presidents who are here? Uh, Stephanie Knox, who was in the video, Jonna Smith, she's the one to be careful of because she got me in trouble for this. Uh, Nancy Love, all amazing people and my sincere thanks to them. I remember reading about Mary Harriman in my provisional year. Yes, year. When I was a provisional, that's what you did. That was your job. You spent the year learning about your community and we had a wonderful time. 
much to my father's chagrin, because he thought it would be a really good idea if I got a job. But anyway, worked on that later. Um, I was taken by Mary Harriman's tenacity and, and what she did at a time that women just weren't that, I hesitate to say aggressive, but they weren't that in, as involved as she certainly was. And I think as a role model and mentor, we should not forget her. We move on, we have things that we're doing now, but she made a difference. She truly made a difference, and I think it's one that we should emulate going forward. In my provisional year, we started with social justice issues. And I was 21 years old going through prisons and thinking, what am I doing here? But it left uh, something in my mind and in my heart that you had to do more. You really had to do more. So again, taking that forward was, was very special in my life. It just proves that we can make a difference. I said you wouldn't need to have all your blankets and uh, things here, but I really wanted to share a quick anecdote of my provisional year, and this was when my provisional chairman had said to me that I really had to apply myself or I wouldn't have a career in the junior league. So I really think I have to go back and say hello one day. And uh, <laughs> thanks to her, I, um, I think I, I mastered it. Um, when I moved to Toronto, although I'd gone to school there and had my school friends and people that I enjoyed in my life, going and joining the League, of which at that point we had 400 active members, and walking into a room, and I was single, and it was at a time that that was not necessarily um, thought of as of being a good thing. You joined the League, you were married, and you had your children. Well, much to the chagrin of my mother, I still wasn't married, but I, I wasn't so bad because at least I was a member of the League, so I hadn't let her down to totally. But in that time, I was determined to be double-placed. I was going to find out all of my, my new city, looking at it through a lens of uh, community service and through the, the League friendships that I developed oh so many years ago who were still involved with the League. I think that says a lot about the organization that not only the Junior League of Toronto does, but I'm sure your Junior Leagues as well. So I commend them for the work that they are doing. I just want to remind people that the Junior League is a safe haven. It's my safe haven to try new things, which I may not have had the opportunity to do or experience otherwise. We were educated in areas of governance and boardmanship, to name but a few. To this day, I remember the first board I was asked to sit on as a Junior League representative, which was Planned Parenthood. To me, it meant that the Junior League believed in me that I could represent them. And whether I was stellar in the first year, I wouldn't say, but it gave me the opportunity and I was never going to let them down. 20 plus boards, advisory committees. Um, I feel honored to serve on various local, Canadian, and international uh, boards in the not-for-profit sector, government, and in industry. Thank you to the Junior League for the training and confidence in me oh so many years ago. Um, if we are honest amongst ourselves, in the League we are probably a plus A minus personalities, might that be correct? So failure just isn't in our lexicon. But in fact, it is a reality of life. Whether personal or league related, self-inflicted, that's the important part, it's self-inflicted disappointment may follow. I find the league will always stand behind its members and we carry on together that's just what we do. The support and caring we have for one another is what strengthens our resolve and is exactly what I know Mary Harriman would have done as well. As you go home from conference with the excitement of newfound skills, the camaraderie of new friends in the league, I challenge you in the spirit of Mary Harriman to remember our past with respect and fondness, as the legacy is the basis of who we are today. 
Let us be proud of that legacy, as it is our responsibility to take it forward to future generations so that the Association of Junior Leagues will prosper and grow, allowing us to continue to make a difference in our communities. Mary Harriman will understand as we tweak things a little bit to make our, her vision our modern vision. We are committed to promoting volunteerism. We do develop the potential of women and we are improving our communities through the effectiveness of action and leadership of trained volunteers. I again thank the Association of Junior Leagues International for this most prestigious award. Enjoy your conference. Thank you, Marty. You're an inspiration to all of us. Thank you for being a role model to junior league members everywhere. Like Mary Harriman, you have been guided throughout your life by an extraordinary sense of social responsibility and have leveraged your abundant abilities to be a catalyst for the improvement of Toronto, changing the landscape and the people forever. We're privileged to have you as a member of our organization and congratulate the delegates from the Junior League of Toronto who join us in this celebration. It's also wonderful that your friends Nadine Spencer and Jonna Smith, as well as Liz Carter and Lorraine Mellon were here to be able to join us today. It's now my distinct pleasure to present you your gifts. As you saw, we have the engraved silver platter from Tiffany's, a piece of fine jewelry from our vendor partner, Laura Lively, and a pair of your choice shoes and brand new Stellar Cleans antimicrobial silver cloth from Plugs, at AJLI partner. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So. Oh. Very nice. Thank you. Photo walk. Don't you hate it when silver trays catch the light? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone. You're welcome. Congratulations, Marty, and what an exciting day and an opportunity to celebrate you. Uh, I mentioned to her earlier when I was reading, you know, I was reading the script and I was practicing and I was looking at all the things she'd done. I mean, I really felt pretty unaccomplished, I just have to say. I was <laughs> kind of feeling bad about myself. But I have a few more years. We'll see if I can, you know, put a few things on there. Um, so this concludes the 2016 Mary Harriman Award Luncheon. Feel free to take the table centerpieces as keepsakes, but be mindful of giving first preference to the league whose Mary Harriman Award winner might be depicted at your table. And please also remember to leave the frames behind. So pictures, yes, frame, no, okay? And um, enjoy the next set of workshops, which will begin at 1.30. Thank you very much.